Good morning, good afternoon, good evening from whichever location you are watching this video, you are seeing this video. So what are we doing today? Today we are going to go and learn angular fundamentals, angular basics in flat two hours. Now I know that there are many YouTubers out there, you know, who will say that I will make you an angular pro in two hours, one hours and some even claim like 10 minutes. No comments, no no comments about it, right? Uh, I've been a trainer in Angular for past 10 years. I started from Angular 1 and now I'm doing the new version of Angular. I've taught a lot of corporates, you know, been a speaker in Angular conferences and also handled big projects in Angular. And one thing I can say, you need to go slow, you need to go steady to become a pro. So, 1001% guarantee that if you go through these two hours, the fundamentals, the basics of Angular, you should be able to do it. You should be able to create a UI. You should be able to do the bindings. You should be able to show the data in the grid and so on, right? So this is completely a beginner's tutorials and I'm going to go very step by step. You can see out there right on my screen, um, you can see the syllabus, right? So I have divided the syllabus into 10 parts, right? So I divided the syllabus into 10 parts, right from basics, you know, what is Angular? I have started with the definition of Angular. After that, I have gone through, gone to the installations then we are going through TypeScript and then we'll be creating an Angular project. Uh, we'll be understanding the Angular file structure. We'll be understanding the fundamentals, you know, like decorators, components, modules, directives, and so on. We'll be looking at the whole flow of Angular, bindings, expressions, interpolation, and different types of binding, right? So go through this two hours and I can 1001% guarantee that you are inside angular right and remember that it's a two hours of tutorial definitely you will have a lot of problems right so when you get any problem you know what you have to do is down below in the youtube comments you should go right over there and just put the timestamp you know saying that okay this is the timestamp where i'm facing a problem and i will try to answer to all the youtube comments right please when you put a youtube comment especially about a problem make it very detailed you know saying that i got this error here i got this error at this timestamp, and so on right here's a small request to create you know such kind of content it takes a lot of efforts think about it you know for this two hours you know we have to do so much video editing we have to have the right source code at place the trainer has to sit you know and and make sure that everything works right we have we have to have the notes at place and so on right so if you really think you know that someone should benefit out there someone should learn angular please go ahead and share this video on your linkedin must be on your uh, twitter on your facebook right and here it is you know if you go and if you share this videos anywhere on your linkedin on your twitter anywhere right i will give you this angular interview question ebook for free right so go ahead share this video and send us a mail at questpond at questpond.com and I'll make sure that you get this ebook for free. Uh, you know, this Angular interview question ebook actually covers more than 50 plus questions uh, with detailed answers and so on. Please remember that one is that uh, you should be able to do the practicals, right? Another one is that you should be able to clear interviews. Why do we learn new technologies? We should get a job, right? We should get some money, isn't it? So one is that you should learn step by step. At the same time, you should be ready for interviews you should practice interview questions so if you go down below in the youtube comments out there i have pinned a youtube comment you know where we have one hour of angular interview question video please go through that it will help you to prepare for angular as well right so do step by step as well as do interview questions go in a balanced way so go ahead share this video get this ebook happy learning happy job hunting let us get started so let us first start with the definition of angular what is angular who made angular and so on right so you can see here i am here on the official website of angular which is angular.io so angular.io is the official website of angular uh, so when you say that you want to know anything about angular which is officially out there then this is the website right uh, first thing angular is created by google it is maintained by google it is funded by google that is the first part right and you can see here I am on this official website and there is a small note out here what is angular so let us read this let us try to understand it and let us try to get you know what exactly is angular right so you can see here it says that angular is a development platform so it's a development platform to build applications and specifically the UI part of the application so angular is a development platform 
And when you say it's a platform, that means that uh, it will provide a very well structured framework. It should provide, you know, libraries. It should provide tool sets and so on, right? And that's what exactly this development platform has. First thing you can see, it has a very well structured framework here, a component based framework by which you can go and create wonderful uh, UI applications, right? Second one, you know, it has very, you know, a lot of ready-made libraries. For example, if you want to go, uh, if you want to move from one UI to another UI, it has routing. If you want to go and create the UI part of it, it has forms. If you want to go and make an HTTP call, it has, uh, you know, HTTP client and so on. So a lot of libraries out there by which you can expedite your development. And the last one, it has developer tools, you know, to build, to test, and a lot of other things, right? So basically, Angular is a development platform and it is built on TypeScript. We are going to go and learn TypeScript in the coming one or, you know, in the coming 20 to 30 minutes. So Angular is a development platform which is built on TypeScript. And this development platform helps you to, helps you to create the UI part of the application. Remember that Angular's main focus is to create the UI part of the application. And it has three things. First one, it has a very nice, well-structured framework which is actually called as a component based framework. Second, it has a lot of reusable libraries, right? So it has a lot of reusable libraries by which you can go and make HTTP calls, by which you can go and do validations, by which you can go and do routing. And the last one is it has uh, awesome developer tools out there, you know, to build, to test and so on, right? So that's what Angular is. It is a platform which has a structured framework, a reusable library, and well-defined tool sets. Now, in case if you have not understood the definition, in case uh, if you have understood the definition partially, don't worry about it. Later on, you know, we are going to go and revisit this definition uh, by, by looking at the code. So at that time, that would be more clear visibly, right? Um, now, before we start, uh, you know, the installation of Angular and so on, I want to make a very important statement. And this statement, especially, you know, people who are new to Angular, they have to get this statement, you know, because I've been teaching Angular for past now almost uh, 10 years, 2010, Angular 1 was launched. And after some years, Angular 2 family, the new family was launched, right? One of the things, you know, which I've learned about Angular, when I, whenever I've, te whenever I've been teaching students is that, Angular is very easy to learn. It is very easy to understand, but it is very tough to start. Okay. It is very tough to start learning. So it is actually very easy to learn, but it is very tough to start learning. You know, in other words, the prerequisite of Angular's Angular, the prerequisite of Angular is something, you know, which sometimes, you know, makes a developer really tired or they lose stamina, right? So uh, the first thing, you know, what in the prerequisite is, you know, the installation right the installation is not that complex you know uh, we need node uh, we need vs code we need angular cli we need typescript uh, you know but you can get you know some of those exceptions and some of those exceptions are so weird and so bad right you know you can if some of the versions don't match right it can really lead to a problem so the first part is the installation the second is you know we have to understand a uh, node right and we should be able to use NPM very effectively, right? So the second thing is that we have to understand NPM, right? We have to understand a little bit of Node. Now remember that Node, we have to just understand what is Node. But NPM part, the package.json part, we have to understand in detail, right? After this, you know, we have to understand uh, something called as TypeScript, you know, because the complete Angular is based on TypeScript. So this is again, uh, you know, one more prerequisite uh, you should learn and at least the basic of TypeScript, uh, how to compile TypeScript, you know, what is the, exactly is TypeScript you have to understand. And then, you know, you have to uh, understand the Angular CLI. So basically how to use Angular CLI, how to install it and so on. And after that, you can start learning. Right. So what I, what I mean to say is, you know, the Angular is easy to learn, but it is a little bit I'll not say tough, you know, but definitely, you know, there is a long way, you know, to start learning, right? So this, these are the prerequisites. So what we'll do is we'll first, in the first one hour, right? So let us, let us keep a target at least for the coming two hours. So in the first one hour, 
we will do the prerequisite we will understand uh, you know all these things and then in the next one hour we will do the learning right so this coming two hours is divided into two parts the first one is the prerequisite right the learning of the prerequisite the installations and so on and then the next part is we will start learning right so if you look at the syllabus so here is the syllabus i have for the coming two hours you know this is for the coming two hours my syllabus we have already done with what is angular we have looked into prerequisite so the first 25 minutes you know we'll spend on spend on installation then after that you know we'll try to understand node and npm that will take 15 minutes then we will look into typescript you know that will take more 15 minutes then we will go and install uh, angular cli we will look into how to create a project that will take 15 minutes and then after that we start understanding the project of angular we start getting into important uh, basic concepts like decorator components modules and directives and uh, then we will look into angular bootstrapping flow we will look into bindings we will look into different type of bindings we will create a simple simple a project out there you know where we will do table binding logic and so on so this coming two hours you know i have divided this complete lecture into 10 sections in that you know the first 50 percent of the 10 sections will go into the angular prerequisite right and the next 50 percent you know we will learn right and let me assure you let me assure you 1001 percent that if you do this two hours religiously religiously right you should be inside angular and what you can do is you know to complete the first two hours what you can do is you can go really slow so you can say that okay today i will just do the installation 25 minutes just do the installation go back relax have tea coffee have fun go for a movie enjoy your family then after two three days come back and say okay let's do the next 15 minutes and then let's do the next 15 minutes and then do the next 15 minutes go slow go nice don't lose stamina the next 15 minutes and you should be able to achieve your goal right so with all that right let us get started with the next part the installation of angular so the first step is to install vs code so go ahead and google vs code and you will get this first link out here visual studio code you can click on this link and you can see this is uh, visual studio code or code out here and you can see this small link out here download for windows table build so go ahead and it will start downloading right now very important note out here until our until vs code gets downloaded there is something called as vs code and there is something called as visual studio right so you can see there is this visual studio out here now you shouldn't be installing visual studio visual studio is very good you know for c sharp for mvc definitely it can do angular as well but for now you should be installing vs code and they all belong to the same family they all come from microsoft right but this is what our choice should be vs code right so please make a note of that VS Code is different and Visual Studio is different. So VS Code is this, right? So once you once once you download VS Code, you will get such kind of a setup. So if you go out here, you will get a setup like this. Now remember that at this moment my machine is of 64 bit, so I have 64 bit. In case your machine is not 64 bit, then the appropriate download should be made. And if you have any problem with the installations, you can please send us a mail at questpond at questpond.com. I'm more than happy to help you. So I'm going to go and run this. I accept. Now remember that VS Code installation is damn simple. You have to just press next, next, next. It's it's just a very smooth installation. So next, uh, do you want to create a desktop icon? Yes, why not? Uh, add to path variable. So all that, keep it checked. Say next and install. Now, once the installation finishes, right? So you can see your installation finishes and you can see um, that there is a small checkbox out, out here saying launch uh, Visual Studio Code. Now, either you can click on that checkbox or you can just say finish, right? And you can go out here and you can search if VS Code has been installed. If VS Code is installed, you should get an icon something like this. You can see there is a uh, there is this 
uh, app out here visual studio code which has been installed now one very important point whenever you are opening visual studio code for coding right either angular or react or anything right i would always advise you to open visual studio code in admin mode right so always run in admin mode so i'm going to go and say run as an administrator this is a very important step specifically for angular a lot of time you do installations and for those installation you need admin rights so i would suggest that run visual studio code as administrator so i'm going to say run as an administrator and there it is so there is there you can see vs code is now running right so uh, uh first thing what you see you see something called as get started out here you can just 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 close it right now let us go ahead and uh, create a folder so i'm going to go and open a folder now remember in vs code you don't open a project you don't open solution files you open a folder right so all your source code is into a folder so i'm going to go and create a folder out here so very quickly in my d drive let me create a folder out here saying learn angular and whatever code we write right we will be writing in this folder out here right so i'm going to go and select folder now you can see there's a small box out here it says do you trust the authors of the files in this folder yes i trust right i trust and i'm sure that you know there won't be any viruses or uh, there won't be any kind of code you know which will harm my computer right yes i trust the authors right and we can close this so you can see now at the left hand side you have an explorer out here with this learn angular and uh, you can go and you can create files in this folders out here right um, now uh, in case you are new to vs code you don't have to worry too much whatever i'm doing in this demo just try to follow that right so one is this explorer out here you can go and you can create a file here for example you can go and you can create a file here let's say index.html right and uh, you can say control plus in case if you want to make the fonts bigger and uh, you can write html code out here so you can see it does have some basic intelligence out here so if you say doc that is a code snippet as well it just gives you the code snippet right so basically in vs code you open a folder and then you right click you create files you create folders right if you right click and if you say reveal in file explorer you will see that uh, that index.html file is out here right uh, so one is you have to understand how to open a folder in vs code how to create files right and the second important thing which you should be knowing is how to use terminal so if you go here there is something called as a terminal so just click on new terminal what is a terminal a terminal is nothing but it is a command prompt you know from which you can fire commands you know so for example in this command prompt i can go and i can write commands like directory and i can see my files i can go and fire my node commands and so on right so two important things in vs code one is open a folder create files and run the terminal and you should be able to run the commands now the next step is to install node.js so go and google node.js and you will come to this first link out here node.js.org and then you will see that there is something written about node.js over here uh, at this moment don't worry about what is node.js what is npm what is typescript you know just focus on the installation part uh, once the installation is right you know later on i'll be explaining all of these concepts very much in depth now if you see out here you will find that there are two downloads there are two links out here one is recommended for most users and the another one is the latest feature right now if you're working on live projects if you're working on serious projects right i would suggest to use this one which is recommended for most users why because this is a stable version it has been time tested uh, bugs have been removed and so on but when you're learning something uh, if you're doing something kind of a hobby project you know if you want to test things test new features right then you can go and install the latest feature but please note that there is a probability that it can have bugs right now because we are learning and i just want to make sure that this course stays for a little bit of long time right uh, what we'll do is you know let us go ahead and install the latest 
current latest feature right so i'm going to go and install this 18.0.0 now please note at this moment the version is 18.0.0 later on it can be 20 or whatever right uh, but i think you know whatever i'm teaching here at this moment in angular for angular right those things won't change as such right and if you think that something have changed, right, please send us a mail at questmon at questmon.com. I'm more than happy to uh, tell you how to overcome, how to go about those new things, right? Uh, those new uh, new changes. So I'm going to go and download this. So if you go and download it, you will see that uh, it's, uh, it's downloading down right down below. And uh, let us go and do the installation. Again, the installation of Node.js is pretty straightforward. You know, that is... Uh, nothing uh, you don't have to do anything big out here it is just a smooth next 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 screen so I'm going to say next I accept next you can change the directory if you wish but at this moment I will just keep it C program files node.js next just keep it as it is next automatically install these tools like chocolatey and so on uh, chocolatey and so on no I don't want it uh let's keep it let's keep it unchecked we say next and install so there it goes and you can see node.js has been successfully installed great now let us go ahead and check that if our node installation has been done properly or not so i'm going to go and first search out here node so i should be able to find this small app here installed so i can just go and click on it so it says here version 8.18.0.0, which is right. That's the version I had installed, right? Uh, and the other thing, you know, which I would recommend you to also check is go and run the command prompt. Run the command prompt in admin mode. Run VS Code in admin mode. Remember that I will not repeat this thing again, but it is the most important thing. A lot of, lot of those issues of admin rights will get resolved if you do this, a lot of the issues of installation can be overcome, you know, if you just say run as admin. So I'm going to go and say run as admin out here. And uh, let us go and check, you know, the version of node. So I'll just say node hyphen V. In case you are not able to see this, let me go and make the fonts bigger, a little bit larger. Right. So there it is. Ah, It's not. Hang on. Font. Make it seven. The 72 is too big. Right, so you can see here, guys. I hope it is more clear now. Node hyphen V and just press enter. Ah, sorry, clear screen. Let me again say node hyphen V. So you can see here it is showing version 18.0.0. Now, also, one of the other things you know what we need with uh, need for Angular is npm node package manager. Now, this node package manager you know gets installed with node. So with node, this npm uh, module gets installed, right? So let us go and check, you know, if the npm module is also installed. So there, it, so there it is. You can see we also have npm. Now you can see the version of npm is different than node. This is very important. So don't think that the npm and the node version will be same because they are the same software, uh, but they are different actually. So node is on 18.0.0 and your npm version is on 8.0. 6.0 right so good so that this this actually confirms that your node has been installed properly right the other thing what we would like to do is we would like to go to vs code and just check the node from vs code as well right from the terminal so i'm going to go and launch this terminal out here terminal new terminal and let us check you know can we run the node commands from here so i will say node hyphen v now you can see here it's saying, oh, like I don't understand node, what happened, you know, and so on. The term node is not recognized and this and this and this, right? Now, um, a couple of things out here. Uh, first thing, if you see at the right hand side, now be very careful out here. It says PowerShell, right? It says PowerShell. So I would suggest that uh, to not use PowerShell, but use a simple command, right? So I'm going to go and delete this command prompt out here and delete this terminal, right? And uh, I would like to uh, switch to simple command prompt, right? So you can see a simple command prompt. So now you can see there are two command prompts, one which is of PowerShell. I will talk about PowerShell later on, but at this moment to make sure that 
node is installed, we don't need this PowerShell command prompt. We just need a simple CMD. The CMD which we ran from outside, that's what we need, right? So let us go and check out here node hyphen V. If it is running, then it is good. You can see again, it is showing me an exception saying that, no, I don't recognize it, right? So that means there is something else. Now what happened is, you know, when I installed node, my VS code was open. I repeat this and I did it on purpose actually. <laughs> uh, so when I installed a node, my VS code was open. So I'm going to go and, and close this and restart my VS code, right? So I'm going to go and restart my VS code. Now remember again, run as admin. I'll not repeat this again, but I'm still repeating it, uh, you know, for the good of everyone. So I'll just say run as administrator. And now let us see. So you can see there is CMD out here. Let us do a clear screen, CLS, clear screen and let us say node hyphen V and now you can see our commands are running npm hyphen V our commands are running right remember that you can also run this through PowerShell but sometimes you know for some reasons it does not run for example now you know even the node commands will run from PowerShell right but I would recommend that that stick to CMD because PowerShell uh, is actually uh, for something else right so we'll talk about that later on but but try to be on cmd rather than on powershell right good you know so this confirms that our node is installed our npm is working and it is working in an integrated manner in other words we can fire the node commands you know from vs code so uh, that confirms that our node installation our npm installation and our vs code installation is just perfect so we have now installed VS Code, we have installed Node, we have checked the version of Node and NPM. Now it is time to install Angular CLI, right? So I'm going to go and again clear screen out here and let me do a control plus, you know, just to make sure that you can see the clear screens clearly. So control plus to make the fonts bigger control minus to make the font smaller vs code right so let us go and install the cli so we'll say here npm install remember npm is a part of node right hyphen g at the rate angular front slash not backslash front slash cli watch this command clearly watch this command again npm install hyphen g at the rate angular slash CLI enter now remember that this takes a little bit of time to install because uh, the size of the CLI is a little bit big right depending on your internet connection it can take one minute to two minutes to five minutes as well right so there it is it is getting installed now if everything goes good right you should not see any red signs out here so you can see at this moment I'm seeing some warnings, but that is absolutely fine, right? I'm seeing, uh, I'm not seeing any red signs. I'm just seeing some blue signs out here uh, or maximum, you know, you can say they are warnings, right? Uh, but I don't see any red signs. If you see a red sign, then that's a concern, right? So that's, the, you know, so you can see here it's saying added 196 packages, audited them as well, and everything looks good, right? Again, I'll clear screen out here. Now, in order to go and check, you know, if our uh, CLI has been installed, we'll fire the command ng hyphen v. ng. This ng comes from that Angular. In the word of Angular, we have that ng. So that's why you know they kept the same. They kept the CLI name as ng. The commands of the CLI is ng. So we'll go and we'll say ng hyphen v, and let us check. Oh, I'm sorry, it is ng version. <laughs> so sorry, you know, like node hyphen v, npm hyphen v, right? So I, I I just got carried away. So ng version, I'm so sorry, ng version. And we should see here the version of our CLI. So you can see here, uh, it, sh it says that your CLI version is 13.3.4 your node version is 18.0.0 and your npm version is 8.6.0 and it has installed you know some angular semantics out here so uh, that should be okay so remember that this is the most important part 
So just make sure that you have this version of the CLI, you have this version of the node and this version of the NPM, right? Now remember that definitely in the coming months, you know, there are going to be higher versions, but you don't have to worry. Whatever I'm recording at this moment is very much true for the coming higher versions as well. In case if there is any changes, I will send an updated recording for it, right? So that's that's those three versions out there. If they are all okay, if you are able to fire, fire this ng version command, that means your Angular CLI has installed properly, right? ng version, right? And remember that you can use the up arrow key. So you can use the up arrow key and the down arrow key to get the previous commands, you know, which you have fired on VS Code. So you can see here, I'm getting all my previous commands, you know, which I have fired in my VS Code, right? So up arrow key and the down arrow key will help you to get the commands, you know, which you have written uh, previously in the command prompt. So now that uh, we have installed the node, we have installed CLI, it's now time to go and test if we can create our sample Angular application, right? So I'm going to go and type this command ng new project name is test. So ng new test and then just press enter. You would be now prompted with a couple of questions out here. Uh, don't worry about these questions. When we start learning Angular, I will, you, I will go through each one of these options. For now, just press enter, enter and enter, right? If everything is good out here, if everything goes nice, if you don't get any errors, you will see at the left hand side, a test folder has been created and you should see such kind of a folder structure, test, SRC, right? And you can see down below it is showing installing packages NPM. So let this complete. This takes uh, quite a bit of time depending on what your internet connection is, right? So at this moment, I have a decent internet connection, so must be it will take a minute for me. But in case you are having, you know, a little bit slow internet connection, then it can take a lot of time, right? So if everything is good, then this installing of the packages, everything works fine. And you should see that your command prompt or your console here over here, the terminal over here should not show any red signs. So there it is, it is installing. And you can see now everything has been installed successfully. It says packages installed successfully, right? So, and everything is green out here. If you see anything red out here, that means there is a problem. And when you have a problem in case, you know, when you have a problem, what you have to do is when you're actually interacting with us on the email, you have to first tell us what is your node version, right? This is the first thing you will tell us what is your node version right and what is your cli version right so you know this actually clarifies you know a lot of things for us that why uh, your project is not getting created okay because most most of the errors what you'll get out here is because you know the, there is a mismatch between the node version and the cli version which you're trying to install okay so good now the project has ran right so let us go and do a directory. Directory actually shows us all the folders. So you can see the folder test out here. The next thing is to run the final command and run the Angular application. So you will go and you will say change directory test. This is a very important step. Whatever project name you have created, you will say CD test. You will go inside that folder and you will fire the command ng serve. ng serve. What ng-serve command will do is it will actually go and run this Angular application and make sure that your installation is complete. So you can see I've done an ng-serve and it has made the application live in this 4200 port. Now, please note that at this moment when I did the ng-serve command, it was quite quick, right? But depending on your configuration of your machine uh, or depending on your speed of your machine, it can take some time, right? So, so a little bit of patience is needed. So I'm going to go and run Google Chrome and let us go and paste this URL out here, HTTP localhost 4200. You can get this URL from this console out here. In case not, you can type it out, HTTP localhost 
colon 4200 enter and if you see your first angular application running if you see the screen out here this is this is the sign that your installation of your angular is complete now couple of important things to remember you definitely get errors right so a couple of important things to remember first thing when you actually go and fire the commands from the terminal make sure that you are on cmd you are using cmd so basically when you actually go and say new terminal right make sure that you are adding a command prompt you are running your ng commands through a command prompt and not through a powershell if you're running through powershell right if you're running through powershell then you can get certain errors like you know for example if i do ng new xyz you can see that I'm getting this error out here saying that C users shiv uh, ng.ps1 cannot be loaded, the file is not digitally signed, and so on and so on. And it's saying that please set your execution policy. Right? So in case you are you want to fire from PowerShell, remember what is PowerShell? PowerShell is nothing but it is a scripting language, you know, which can be used by administrators to automate tasks. So for example, let us say you want to go and uh, back up a file regularly every evening you want to go and restart a computer right for so the administrators can write powershell scripts and they can run those scripts through the powershell command so in case you know if you are on powershell right and if you get those errors you can see i am actually uh, you know having a stack overflow link out here the stack overflow link is also there uh, you know present in the notes as well so over here right uh, then couple of things you can do is you can either go and remove the ngu.ps1 from that roaming folder right or what you can do is that you can run the powershell you know through this elevated command so basically you will actually go and the execution policy of the powershell command you will actually uh, elevate it right so i'm going to go and do this so i'll say clear screen and uh, so you can see here even the ng version any any commands of ng don't work anymore right so i'm going to go and paste here and run this once you run it right uh, now i should be able to get ng version let us see so there it is it is working now right so in case if you are getting this error out here the one of the things what you can do is you can go and you can run this command set execution policy right or what you can do is you can go and you can remove this ng1.ps1 and you can do an npm clear cache also if you want right uh, and that again probably can work so these are the two solutions which you can implement you know in case you are getting this error out here but i would say the best is to run the command uh, run the commands you know through through command prompt through the normal uh, cmd to avoid avoid these issues right but in case you are running from powershell just make sure that you are running the set execution policy or you try the ng.ps1 delete so let us summarize the installation first one you have to go and you have to install node you have to go and you have to install node right second thing you will go and you will install the cli so you will say npm install angular cli npm install hyphen g at the rate angular slash cli once this is done you will go and you will do ng new test you will go inside the test folder and say ng run and once you do an ng run right you should be able to see your angular application if you see your angular application running that means that your angular installation is proper and complete so let us first start with node.js let us try to understand what exactly is node.js right so if you go to node.js.org you will see this one statement out here the one slogan in which they have written node.js is a javascript runtime built on chrome's v8 javascript engine so we all know chrome browser which comes from google right in that you know we have a very strong compiler or you can say interpreter which is the v8 javascript engine right and this v8 javascript engine you know uh, it, it it is it is super fast you know why because 
what it does is you know it basically takes javascript and it generates byte code you know from the syntax right and then this byte code is compiled to machine code this is very important this byte code is compiled to machine code so think about it if javascript gets compiled to machine code it can run super fast isn't it okay now and that's why the engine's name is v8 remember this v8 is not version 8 but this v8 you know uh, signifies like a eight cylinder engine right so we have like uh, two cylinder engine we have four cylinder engines in automobiles and you know here we are talking about eight cylinder engine that means this is an eight cylinder engine super fast compiler which actually compiles the javascript you know to machine code right and uh, just quickly out here you know if you see all these uh, statements you know uh, by the V8 team out here looks like you know they are fan of automobiles so you can see the ignition generates the byte code and then the turbo fan compiles this byte code and this V8 you know which actually uh, is nothing but the super fast eight stroke engine right out there okay so uh, so that means um, uh, that the best compiler or the best interpreter for JavaScript is with Chrome, right? So what the Node.js team did is, you know, the Node.js team took this uh, Chrome V8 engine, only the Chrome V8 JavaScript engine and created a separate setup. And that's what the setup we have just installed, right? So you can think about this Node.js is, I'll not say exactly like a wrapper, but definitely the heart of Node.js is the V8 engine. So the one which we have downloaded in our computer right during the installation process is nothing but it is the super fast v8 javascript engine right now uh, the next question comes is then so what will happen now right so we have installed it what happens right that means that you know we can now run javascript outside the browser because we have the v8 engine or the javascript engine installed in our computer and we have the best JavaScript engine which is installed in our computer, uh, which is in a form of Node.js, we can say. So that means we can run JavaScript outside the browser. We can go and we can create uh, desktop applications. Uh, we can create server side applications and so on, right? And one important point, you know, which I want to stress out here is if you watch out there, when it comes to debugging JavaScript, 99.99% developers I have seen use Chrome to debug JavaScript. And one of the reasons, you know, why they use Chrome to debug JavaScript because it because of this V8 JavaScript engine, because it is so, uh, so strong, you know, it can compile to byte code and so on, right? So if you see most of the time, developers actually swear by Chrome, you know, when it comes to debugging JavaScript, they go to the sources tab out here and, uh, you know, they click on this debug tab and they debug inside Chrome. Why? Because the V8 engine is very promising, right? So uh, let us go ahead and do a small uh, demo of Node.js, right? Uh, so with that, you know, we'll understand that how Node.js helps you to run JavaScript outside the browser. So what we'll do is in the same learn Angular folder, uh, let us first thing go ahead and delete this two files what we have here remember this was the test folder which was created right so this was just to test that if our installations are proper right and index.html i had just created right so i'm going to go and do a shift delete out here and uh, i will just delete this uh, complete two folders out here and um, uh, so let us go ahead and create a simple uh, javascript file here so we'll just say uh, test.js right and in this let us go ahead and write some javascript code so i'll say here where x is equal to zero and uh, control plus and i'll say console.log and i'll just say show me x right and we can just do an x plus plus right so now you can see here i have this uh, javascript code out here uh, uh, you can see now the files got deleted you can see how vs code uh, strikes this index.html indicating that this file is not available right so i'm going to go and close it left hand side everything is cleared right so here it is i have this simple uh javascript file here test.js and let us say we want to now go and run this so in other words we want to run this without opening the browser right so we can say here node and we can say test.js and you can see out here it has 
ran ran the code out there so it incremented the x to 1 and you can see it is displaying uh, in the console console.log right right so now this example you know looks very simple but you can you can feel the power of javascript running offline and once javascript can run outside the browser you can create desktop applications you can create server applications and so many other things right now one uh, small question out here uh, which i want to ask to everyone if you know the answer uh, you can either go and send me a message privately or either you can put down in the comment section that basically why I did not use here document.write, why I did not use here alert, why did I use console.log, right? So if you know the answer, uh, please go ahead and uh, send a message to me or if you want, you can go ahead and put down in the comment section as well. Now, node programming is a very different big world altogether. And when you say you want to work with Angular, you don't need node programming as such, right? So we will not be doing node programming, but when you install node, we get something called as NPM, that is a node package manager. So we need to understand that very well. NPM, you're going to go and use day and night, you know, when you're, when you're doing Angular, right? So what is NPM? NPM, which stands for node package manager, helps you to install JavaScript package in your computer. So for example, now let us say you want to go and install jQuery. So what you can do is you can go and say here npm install jQuery. So once you go and you say npm install jQuery in your command line and you say enter, it will go, it will fetch jQuery from online and install it in your local machine. So you can see here at the left hand side, it has created a folder node underscore modules and it has installed jQuery in your machine. Now, if you don't have NPM, what do you have to do? You have to go to online, you have to go to jQuery, wherever it is, right? Get that jQuery file, and then you can use it in your project, right? So let us say I want to go and uh, install, let us say, Lodash, right? So I can say here Lodash, and I'll say enter. It will go, it will fetch online. It will take up the latest version of Lodash and install it in your node underscore modules folder. You can see, this node underscore module folder is a reserved folder. The name is node underscore modules, all small letter, right? So you can see here, it has installed jQuery as well as it has installed Lodash inside the folder. Now what you can do, let us say, if you want to go and use jQuery, then you can go to the dist folder and you can get your jQuery.js from here. Now remember that whenever you're doing an NPM install, it actually brings the whole GitHub source code. So, you know, the complete source code of that open source, it will it will bring to your local machine. So you can see here it, ha it has fetched the whole jQuery with not only the source code, this is the source code of jQuery, uh, but also the, the compiled files, the finally compiled uh, JS as well, right? So now if you want to use jQuery, for example, in your project, right, you will say index.html and uh, so at this moment jquery final compiled jquery is available here in the dist folder jquery.js so as a developer you can go and say script you can say src and uh, then you can just say dot dot slash uh, node underscore modules uh, sorry dot slash node underscore modules and go to jquery go to dist and take your jquery.js right uh, so this is, these are your packages and this is your source code, right? These are the packages and this is your source code. Now you will also find a file here called as package.json, right? What is this package.json file? This package.json file has the list of dependencies which you have installed in your project folder. So this is your project folder now, learn Angular right this is your project folder in case you want to directly open the folder through vs code right click and say reveal in file explorer so if you do that you can see your folder opened out here right click reveal in file explorer so inside this project folder you know whatever dependencies are installed in the node underscore modules whatever packages are installed in the node underscore module is present in the package.json now what happens you know practically is that you always check in into your source control. In your source control, you will only check in 
the source code, your source code of the application and package.json. That's it. You won't be checking in node underscore modules. You never check in Java runtime or a .NET runtime into your source control, right? So you only check in the source control, the source code, I'm sorry, and the dependencies. So what happens now is, let us say you go to a new machine out there and you get latest the source code and you get latest the package.json file, right? And then you have to only go and say npm install. Once you do an npm install, it will bring all these dependencies into node underscore module. So you can see here if I do an npm install, it will go package by package and bring these two packages into your node underscore module, right? So package.json has a list of dependencies of your project folder. The last important prerequisite before we start learning Angular is TypeScript. Right, so you can see here, I have Google TypeScript and it actually uh, lands up on this first page out here. And uh, if I click on this TypeScript out here, it takes us to the TypeScript homepage or to the TypeScript's official website, typescriptlang.org. And if you see this one big slogan of TypeScript, which they have written out here is, TypeScript is nothing but it is JavaScript. So basically TypeScript is a language uh, and that language when it gets compiled or it gets converted, I will say rather or transpiled, it gets converted to JavaScript with strongly typed, with syntax for types. So TypeScript is a strongly typed programming language that builds on JavaScript. Okay, so what does it mean? Let us let us try to understand it. So let us go out here. Now when you look at JavaScript, right, JavaScript is a loosely typed language, right? In other words, you know, it does not care about the data types that you can change the data type during the runtime. For example, you can see this small test.js, which we had written previously. So in line number one, when you say where x is equal to zero, it is a number, right? But you can see in line number three, when I say x is equal to some text out here, okay, this becomes a string, right? So JavaScript allows this. JavaScript does not complain about this. Means it, it will not, it will, it, in line number one, it will be a number. X variable will be a number. And in line number three, X will be a text. And JavaScript will not complain about it. You can just go and run test.js and it's all okay. So you can see here, it has displayed X. It has not complained, nothing, right? So JavaScript is a, is a dynamic language. The data types can change during the runtime, right? Now, definitely, you know, dynamic languages have their own uh, positive points, you know, they have their own strong points, right? Uh, but there is another uh, group of developers who believe in strongly typed language. So in strongly typed language, once you create a variable and you define a data type, you cannot change that data type, right? For example, here, let us say, if, you know, due to, uh, let's say that in line number three, if somebody says x plus plus, this can be problematic. I mean, like you can't increment a text as such because this uh, this increment operator is mostly on numbers, right? So now what happens out here is, you know, uh, you see you can you you get some you can get some unwanted results like N A N not a number, right? So definitely one of the strong points of dynamic language is that you can code faster, you can deliver faster, it is dynamic, it is like cool, like breeze, right? But at the same time, you know, the way it is cool, right? If, if you don't pay attention, uh, you can have bugs, you can have unwanted side effects. So there is another group of uh, thought of people or thought of developers who say that, no, we understand that dynamic languages are good, but we want it to be a strongly typed language. We want that the data type should be checked, you know, right while we write the code and we shouldn't be allowed to change this data type. They should actually throw up an exception. That's where actually TypeScript comes into picture. TypeScript says that I will give this strongly typeness to JavaScript. So TypeScript makes your JavaScript strongly typed. Right. So now let us see how to go and install TypeScript. So if you go out here, you can see here either you can go and you can play on the browser. And another one is you can use NPM. So on your computer via NPM, we can go and we can install TypeScript. So we can say here NPM install TypeScript. Right. Uh, so let us go ahead and install TypeScript. So I'm going to go to my local machine out here and say NPM install 
type script right so that it is you can see uh, it has installed typescript uh, now you can see that it has installed typescript in my local folder out here right uh, what I will do what I will do out here is um, I would like to go and install typescript globally so that you know I can just fire the commands easily or else what I have to do now is I have to go to the bin directory I have to go and get this exe from here right so um, let us go ahead and install typescript globally so I'll just say install uh, typescript uh, typescript hyphen g hyphen g means global right so with this what will happen is i can just fire the typescript command right from here in the command prompt or else i have to go inside this folder and fire the commands right uh, so now let us see uh, let us go and check the version of typescript uh, tsc hyphen v so that it is you can see it has installed the 4.6 version which is the latest version so if you want to go and do coding in typescript you have to go and create a dot ts extension so we can go and we can say learn one dot ts so you can see now this is typescript with a dot ts extension so now i can go and i can define a variable and uh, as we said that typescript is a strongly typed language i can go and i can define its data type so you can see i'm saying that this x1 is a number right so when i say this x1 is a number uh, and if i try to give it a text so let's say in line number two if i try to give it a text out here you can see that there's a small red wriggle out here and if you move your mouse on that red wriggle it is saying that no this is not allowed x1 is already a type number and you are trying to assign a string and typescript is a strongly typed language and it will not allow it so remember typescript is javascript with syntax for types so uh, what does it mean that typescript is javascript so for example here now let us say i go and i say x1 plus plus right i can go and i can convert this typescript to javascript so i can go here and say that tsc remember that is a compiler and if you say learn one dot ts so compile this ts right what it does is it actually goes and creates a learn one dot js so you can see that it has it has i will not say it's compiled compiled means basically uh, to deal with assembly languages where you compile to machine code but i will say rather convert or transpile transpile is the right word so it has taken this dot ts file out here and transpiled it to js so you can see it has made a javascript out of it so remember that uh, this typescript is only during the coding phase it is only for developers who love strongly typeness uh, you know strongly typed uh, a strongly typed kind of an environment for them typescript is there right but at the end of the day when you say you want to run inside the browser it has to be javascript okay so that's why you know this typescript compiler converts this ts into javascript so now this sentence would make a lot of sense typescript is javascript first point right and second but it gives you that feeling of strong typeness and with that you know uh, you will have less bugs uh, with that, you know, you will, you would feel comfortable. So especially people who are coming from C++ and C Sharp and Java, you know, where they feel that strongly typeness is important uh, to catch the bugs early, to have any kind, to, to not have any kind of unwanted side effects. For them, uh, TypeScript, you know, makes, gives, gives like a cover on JavaScript and gives that strongly typed feeling. Now, if you look at the definition of TypeScript again, right, there is one more important word out here which says that it gives you better tooling at any scale. So what does that scale mean? Scale means that, you know, basically it increases the productivity of the developer. If you look at JavaScript, right, JavaScript is a functional programming language. It is a functional language, right? And if you look at, look around, right, but devs who come from C++, who come from C Sharp, who come from Java and so on, most of them are object oriented programmers. At least I feel so 80% of the devs, you know, love object oriented programming. They understand classes. Uh, they, they can write better code, you know, by using those concepts of object oriented programming like polymorphism, inheritance, encapsulation, abstraction. Uh, you know, they use interfaces and abstract classes and so on, right? So suddenly when you tell them, okay, go ahead and have, you know, the same productivity and write the code in JavaScript functions, 
it becomes difficult you know for a person who is doing functional programming it is little bit difficult to get into object oriented programming and a developer who is doing object oriented programming it is very difficult for him to perform at that same scale uh, you know when it comes to functional programming so what typespeed says typespeed says don't worry go ahead write your classes do inheritance do polymorphism write interfaces write abstract classes no worries and i will ensure that i will compile it or i will rather say transpile it and convert it to javascript right so you can go here and you can write your class let us say customer and uh, now let us say a customer has a property name now remember one very important thing in typescript first the name of the variable and then the type normally what we do we say like int i but in case of javascript it is first i number so first the name and name of the variable and then the data type so i'll say your name string right then i will say code string right and i can also go and perform inheritance so i can say customer child extends customer right so i can do inheritance i can write interfaces right so i'm going to have a separate lecture on typescript don't worry about it here i'm trying to just make you understand that it increases the productivity of the developer as well right so if i go and if i compile this learn 2.ts right and if you go and if you just see this learn 2.js my god you can see that uh, so it's it's writing functions it is writing closures it is using ify uh, you don't have to worry about those prototype and so on right so all of that is all taken care out that so you can see this is a this is a function inside a function which is a closure i will not go into closures now i will not go into uh, ify i will not go into prototype right the, what the point i'm trying to make here is that you don't have to worry about it actually right typescript takes care of all that right and second you know it goes one step ahead you know for example now let us say uh, i have this learn 3.ts right because one of the other things uh, what uh, the object of the programmers like is you know they want to create modules as well so uh, let us say you have this one file here learn 2.ts which has customer class and let us say that the learn 3.ts has an address class assume right so let us say this is address out here right so what you can do is that you can go ahead and you can say export so you can you can have these two files separate modular right so you can say here export and in this learn 2.ts you can say import so you can say okay go ahead and import from that learn uh, learn 2.ts sorry learn 3.ts i'm sorry go and import address class from it so you can see your address and then i can say okay one customer uh, this one customer can have multiple addresses so i can go and i can create here uh, an addresses uh, array so i can say array of address right a collection of address and so on so so you can see here you can also create modular code so you can write object oriented programming code you can write modular code and you don't have to worry right you just go and say compile this learn.2.ts it will just go ahead and compile it right uh, so if you if you just see here you can see now very smartly what he has done is learn 2.ts is using learn 3.ts look at look at the smartness so he goes and he tries to compile learn 2.ts and he says oh like learn 2.ts is using learn 3.ts he also compiles learn 3.ts you can see he has compiled learn 3.ts he has also compiled learn 2.js and you can see that he has also used the address class inside this uh, customer class out here right so you can see that is an address out there uh, which is pointing towards the customer dot address right so by using the import and export you can create nice modular physically separate separate files as well right and finally what at the end of the day they get compiled to functional javascript very easily right 
So just going back to that definition, TypeScript is JavaScript, yes, but it is strongly typed, right? The types are checked during the design time. And most important, it, it gives you a nice uh, artificial layer, you know, on which the developers can go and write classes. They can do object-oriented programming. They can create modular code, you know, by using the import and export. And TypeScript will ensure that it will convert it to JavaScript. Now, when the TypeScript compiler compiles the TypeScript file to JavaScript, I'm not sure if I should use this word compile because compile means you take a machine or take a higher level language or you take a code and you compile it to machine language, right? Here, actually, we are converting TypeScript to JavaScript. So we can say transpile, you know, so must be transpile vocabulary would be a better word than compile. So when TypeScript gets transpiled to JavaScript, right, it's a quite complex process. And as a developer, you know, we would like to go and take charge of this process. We would like to customize it. We would like to provide configurations. We would like to provide parameters. For example, I would like to go and uh, provide configuration saying that in which version of JavaScript it should compile, means it should use the ES4 version, ES5, ES6, or which version of ES JavaScript should get compiled, right? So, uh, in order to go and control this compilation process or configure this compilation process, TypeScript team has provided the tsconfig.json file. So let us go ahead and create the tsconfig.json file. For that, we have to say tsc hyphen hyphen init. So what this command will do is this will actually go and create a tsconfig.json file. You can see here, he has created a tsconfig.json file. Now, in this, you can see there are lots of compiler options, you know, which are given out here, like you want to compile into which ES version and so on. So let us go ahead and uh, uh, try to use one of them. For example, uh, let us try to go and say that whenever the compilation happens, whenever the transpilation happens, right, put all the JavaScript into this output directory called as dist, distribution folder. You can see here, at this moment, whenever I go and I, compile this TypeScript, it is actually throwing the JS in the same folder, right? So must be we would like to go and put it into a separate folder, right? So you can see here, I have provided in the tsconfig.json file saying that the output directory should go, the output directory is this. So now what happens is, if you now go and say tsc, now you don't have to go and compile the individual files. Wherever the tsconfig.json file is, you have to just hit tsc, it will take all the uh, TS files and it will try to transpile it into the disk directory. You can see now it has put all the files into the disk folder. Now you can see there are some errors out here, uh, but that's fine. I think you know you can see that there is there is an error out here. And um, uh, now now this is very interesting. You can see uh, there is this error out here in learn 2ts right? Very interesting. And in this learn2.ts, you know, the error says it's it's an error. It says that null is not assignable to address, right? Uh, now, this is interesting. You can see that how TypeScript is taking control uh, over the compilation process. You know, so for example, here now, if I go and if I provide your new array of address, this error will not happen. So if I go and if I do this, uh, this error will not happen. So if I now go and hit again TSC, you can see nothing happens here, right? Now, what is this actually? Now here, you know, when you actually specify null, in this tsconfig.json file, it is doing a strict check. So here, you know, basically, uh, there is something called as a strict check. A strict check is nothing but TypeScript goes and says that it will strictly check, you know, if you are using nulls, uh, if you are doing any kind of weird things, you know, he will try to make it as an error, he will try to warn you, right? So over here, if I go and if I disable that strict check to false, so let us go and see somewhere there should be strict check, right? Strict, yeah, there it is. You can see it is saying type checking strict equal to true. Now, what you would like to do is you would like to say that, see like, yes, I would like to use the strongly typedness, 
but at the same time you know don't stop me from using nulls you know because nulls are important in many cases right because nulls define an absence of something so i would like to use nulls i would like to have my own freedom right so what you can do is you can go and you can provide here saying false if you do that then you won't get the exception anymore so now the type should compiler will say okay you said that I shouldn't be doing a strict check, you know, so now when I do a TSC, no errors out there, right? So uh, basically this tsconfig.json file has lots of configurations and you can go and you can control and customize the TypeScript transpilation process. Now remember that you can see many, many configurations out here. I won't suggest to start going through them now itself, you know, because that would... Uh, you would actually lose your stamina. What you can do is you can do late learning. Late learning means you know, whichever properties are needed, we will look into it. So when we do Angular, right, when we start with Angular, actually Angular coding, there are some three or four properties we, we, we need them on regular basis. At the time, we'll discuss about it. So for now, you don't have to really go into each one of these properties and try to understand them, right? But yes, basically, overall, you have to understand that if you want to go and provide configuration, uh, and if you want to go and customize your transpilation process, you can go and you can provide those configuration into tsconfig.json and TypeScript compiler will take the configurations from this JSON file. So now that we have learned so much about TypeScript, a small quiz on TypeScript. Who created TypeScript? And, uh, you know, just as a hint, I have flashed the hero of TypeScript on the screen, right? So he is a Danish nationality. He works for Microsoft, right? And look at look at our hero right i mean like he has created so many programming language so that's really the inspiration for us you can see that he has created turbo pascal delphi c sharp and now typescript and you know what age does not matter isn't it so if you love programming keep coding right so if you know the answer then please put down in the comments below who created typescript now in order to create a project in Angular, Angular developers don't create it manually. So in other words, they don't go and create a tsconfig.json file and a package.json file. So they don't do it manually. They use something called as the Angular CLI. This Angular CLI comes from the Angular team. So the CLI stands for Command Line Interface. So once you install the Angular CLI, you know, you get nice commands out there, you know, by which you can create the Angular project very easily. I've already explained in the installation part, you know, how to go and install the Angular CLI, but just in case if you have missed it, uh, you can revisit it. Uh, and just in case if, you know, to just quickly iterate over here, I'll say, if you want to install the Angular CLI, you will use NPM, NPM install Angular CLI. And if you want to install it globally, you can just say hyphen G, which will install globally in your computer, right? So for example, now the CLI is installed in my computer in, in this virtual machine out here. So if I want to go and quickly check, you know, the version of Angular CLI, I can say ng version. This ng stands for the two letter word which comes in Angular, right? So A-N-G-U-L-A-R, so that ng comes from that. So if I say ng version, it will quickly give me, you know, which version of Angular CLI is installed in my machine, right? So you can see it is saying you have Angular, in, Angular CLI 13 installed. Now, remember that in case if new CLI versions have come in, this tutorial is still valid, you know, because Angular as such does not change so much in, in, ter in terms of the in terms of the syntaxes, right? So they are quite stable when it comes to changes of syntaxes, right? Okay, so now that you have, uh, you know, the Angular CLI installed, right? Now you can go and we can create a project. Now, what my belief is that if you want to go and learn something, then you should do a project, or do a project, you know, some kind of a project like customer management system or a travel management system or a hospital management system. You know, try to create a small screen, you know, with a add button, with an update button. Try to complete a CRUD application. 
So if you try to complete a CRUD application, you can learn quickly, you can learn to the point, right? So I'm going to go here and create a, a hospital management system. I, you know, I work day and night with the healthcare system, uh, with the healthcare domain. So uh, I would be pretty happy to use, uh, to create a hospital system wherein we will create a simple patient management screen where we can add patients, we can edit patients and so on. But in case if you like some other domain, please go ahead and create project accordingly, right? So in order to create a project, we will say here ng new and I will say hospital management system so hospital management system let me create let me write the whole word out there right so there it is now once you say ng new hospital management system it will ask you a couple of questions the first question it is asking you is that do you want to use angular routing what is angular routing angular routing is nothing but it helps you to navigate it helps you to define your navigation from one screen to another screen. So when you say you want to navigate inside Angular components, inside Angular UI, right? That's where you use Angular routing. So it's saying that I'm going to go and create this project template. Do you want to include Angular routing? Why not? Yes, definitely. We are going to go and define hyperlinks. We'll be defining navigation. So yes, we want this. The next question which it will it's asking is that, which style sheet format are you using? Are you using CSS? Are you using SCSS and SAS and less? Uh, frankly, you know, the other three frameworks of CSS, I've never used it. And I'm sure that many people stick to the basic CSS, right? So we will go and we will select CSS in case, you know, if you want to use uh, SCSS and less, uh, SAS and less, what you can do is that you can go and you can press the down arrow key out there and you can select appropriately. But for now, uh, you can use the down arrow key and the up arrow key to select uh, these menus. But for now, I'm going to go and use CSS because that's what I've used most of my time. And I'll say enter. Once you do that right, it will start creating the project, right? So if you see at this moment inside Learn Angular, you can see uh, this hospital management system, which is out here, which is getting created and uh, it has created this project out here right and you can see it is the npm is installing the packages as well right so this will take some time so give it some time you know until the installation completes but you can see at the left hand side the hospital management system is created with the necessary code base out here by which we can start angular very quickly right so let us give give, give some time and let the npm install all the packages and then we will proceed so if everything is good, if everything goes nice, you know, you will see everything green out here. You can see everything is green and uh, the project has been created at the left hand side, right? But in case, you know, if you find, if you see any issues, then it should be shown in a red color. Remember, there is a green color which says everything is okay. There is an yellow color, you know, which says there are warnings, you know, and developers don't worry about warnings. But if you see a red color, that means, you know, it is something alarming and you won't be able to proceed. So at that time, you know, please send us a message and you know, we'll try the best to help you out. Okay. Now, one very important point to note here is that whenever we create a project by using ng new, it creates it in a folder. For example, I said ng new uh, hospital management system. It actually created inside created it inside a folder. So if you want to go and run this project, you have to go inside this folder. For example, I fired this command from this learn angular folder. So all the project is created inside the hospital management system, right? So whatever you typed in ng new, you know, whatever name you gave to your project, it has created inside a folder. So if you want to go and run angular, you have to go inside that folder to run the project, right? So I will say change directory. And uh, so we'll say here change directory hospital management system. So let us go inside the project. There it is. And now here, if you want to run this Angular project, you will say here ng serve. What this ng serve does is it actually goes and compiles this project, bundles it, does everything and runs your project uh, on, a, on, a, on a mini web server on a 4200 port. So if I do an ng serve out here, you can see it is generating the application bundles it bundles the application and it hosts it in this 4200 port out here. You can just copy it. So we can just say control C and we can 
run it in the browser so uh, I will be I'll be using Chrome right to run and I would suggest everyone to use Chrome you know because when it comes to debugging JavaScript Chrome is the king of it right so if you run this you know there there is your first project which is running right great so ng new to create the project and ng serve to run the project now some couple of uh, mistakes you know which newcomers do a lot of newcomers you know they try to run this uh, run the ng serve command outside the project directory so for example if you try to do an ng serve like this for example you can see here i am now outside the hospital management system so if i now try to run and try to do an ng serve out here i will get an error saying that i don't see the angular this is not an angular project you know i don't find any definitions and so on so this is a very common error so if you get this error that means that you are not inside the project directory so go ahead and change to the hospital management system directory and then fire ng serve and a couple of uh, important tricks you know which you can remember out here you can use this up arrow key and the down arrow key to get your old commands you know which you fired uh, onto the terminal so you can see here all my old commands whatever i have fired into this terminal i get it right so use the up arrow key and the down arrow key you know to get the history of commands which has been fired into the terminal right so uh, i will go and i will say change hospital management system and if i do ng serve out here it will work but if you do ng serve you know where the project directory is not there it will give you this exception saying that that a project definition has not could not be found right now what i will do is you know you can see here that is too much noise out here isn't it uh, because we are also seeing the typescript uh, code out here so we want to only focus now on the hospital management system so what i will do is i will go to the file explorer so if you want to go and go to the folder you know where the hospital management system is you can right click and say reveal in file explorer and we will only open the hospital management system folder so that we are focused on the angular project so i'll say file open folder and i will just give the hospital management system so that i don't see the type sheet code so you can see here now we are just seeing the hospital management system out here and uh, this looks pretty neat and focused isn't it so we don't see other folders and we can be focused on the angular code out here right and please note please run your vs code in admin mode please ensure that you have proper rights right and so on already in the installation i have talked about you know what kind of problems you can face uh, when you run the ng commands and the npm commands great so now that the project project is created now let's go and deep dive into it let us try to understand that what files are present in this project where is the source code and how to start with things before we move ahead a quick quiz name the creators of angular and name the first website created by the creators so if you know their names please pay them respect you know by typing their names in the youtube section remember we are learning their creation and if you don't do not pay them respect that's not human right and just a hint there are there were two developers and both of them worked in google so now let us get started uh, with all the different files which are pro which are present uh, in this template out here right so let us first start with package.json file so if you look at the package.json file it has all the dependencies of angular right and in this you can also see the angular version for example at this moment i'm using the 13th version uh, and please note that in case if you see a 14th version out here or if you see a 15th version out here don't worry you know this tutorial uh, should still help you uh, because you know angular team does not make breaking changes as such at this moment right so this tutorial is still valid if you are if you are if you have the new angular version here this tutorial should be still be valid and it should still work right so the first thing if you see here in the package.json file we have the angular dependencies out here and by looking at these dependencies you can clearly understand that angular is a modular framework in other words the team has created separate separate modules out here so let us say uh, if you say compiler you know they have put in a separate module angular compiler if you talk about forms you know it's in a separate section if you talk about routing it is in a separate section and so on so they have created 
you know modules so the the whole angular framework is modular right so all the dependencies in package.json file then you have the tsconfig.json file remember this is to configure typescript and you have the angular.json file you know which is to configure the angular related configurations so three important configuration files out here one is a package.json file one is a tsconfig file one is a angular.json file also remember in the in the previous part of the video i have also explained you know what exactly is package log.json file right so you can see this package log.json file where we can see the exact version uh, which is installed by angular right uh, which is installed by npm right now you can also see that there are some spec files out here for example you can see this ts uh, config.spec.json whenever you see any kind of spec files out here for example if you go to src also right you will find there are some spec files these spec files are related to testing related to unit testing so so for now you know if you see these spec files just leave it at this moment you know whenever we do unit testing i will talk about these spec files right so package.json for configuring the npms the references uh, the dependencies ts config file to configure the typescript and angular.json file to configure the angular related things and these spec files you know which you see out here are related to unit testing now before we proceed right uh, it is very important to understand you know some vocabularies you know which are used in the angular community uh, with the word angular actually right uh, so we all know that there are two families of angular one is the angular 1.x family which is the old version so you can see this is angularjs.org which is the official website for the old version and this is the new version uh, the angular 2.x family when you say 2.x means 2.0 uh, and then 3. Point of, there was no 3 point so 4.x and then 5.x and 6.x and now we have angular 13 and we can have further angular as well right so this is the new version of angular so this is the old version of angular which is angular 1.x family and this is the new version of angular now um, I have seen this, you know, when you actually go out there and when someone says Angular JS, when they say Angular JS, they are referring to the old version. When they just say Angular, they are referring to the new version. I do understand that the Angular team has said to just call it Angular, understood that, right? But, you know, this vocabulary still is still there in the market. You know, when I go to corporates for training, or for consultancy, you know, they say that, okay, we have Angular JS, which means the old version, and this is the new version where they just say Angular. So now developers have stopped calling, you know, Angular 4 and 5 and Angular 6 and or Angular 13. They just say Angular, which refers to the Angular 2.x family, right? And this one here is the old Angular, which is the Angular 1.x family. And also as a note, you know, remember that this Angular js which is angular 1.x family has come to a support end so in other words you know it's like you know it's it's at the end of life now end of life does not mean that end of angular it means that they will not support angular one i repeat that uh you know this end of life announcement is not for uh, uh how do you say it uh it is not for the angular 2.x family it is for angular 1 so what it means is that well uh, you know the code you know of angular 1 is still accessible in github everything is all out there you know but only that uh, no issues will be will be addressed no pull requests will be made and so on right so uh, there is a discontinued support of angular 1 and all the focus is now on angular 2 family and let us not say angular 2 or angular 4 or angular 5 let us just say angular and at this moment you know when i'm recording this video the new version of angular is 13 and as i've already said that in case even if 14 comes in or 15 comes in right this tutorial should be still be valid so ts config for the typescript configuration package.json for the npm configuration angular.json for the angular configuration ts config.spec file you know for the testing purpose for the unit testing and this node underscore modules folder we all know this node underscore modules folder has all the packages so whatever uh, packages are list listed in the package.json file out here uh, for example you can see angular animation and angular common so you will find that you know this is angular and then you have the angular animation 
you have the angular common you have the angular compiler so you know whatever uh, dependencies are listed in the package.json file uh, all of them are installed in the node underscore modules folder now the most important folder as a developer as an angular developer for us is the src folder this is where we have our source code this is where we write our source code right so 99 percent times you will be working on this src folder so if you see in this src folder there is an app folder and inside the app folder you can see uh, there are certain files out here you can see some html files you can see some .ts files you can see some .module.ts file so this is where you will be spending your 99 percent time you know coding angular uh, and creating applications and so on so let us try to understand this uh, app folder in more detail now before we look into this src folder before we look into this app folder let's revisit angular team's definition for angular so you can see here i am on the official website of angular which is angular.io so please note the official website of angular is angular.io and you can see here there's a small article on what is angular and uh, if you read this uh, definition of angular out here angular is a development platform built on typescript absolutely all this is typescript and uh, let us focus now on the first sentence you can see there are three uh, uh, what you call points out here regarding the definition of angular but let's focus on the first line out here so angular is a component based framework for building scalable web applications component a component and component in angular is the base it is a fundamental on which angular stands it is the basic building block so what we'll do is let us go and focus on this component so you can see here in this src folder you know where we actually will be writing our source code you can see this app.component.ts you know where you know you can see the component right so let us focus on this this fundamental on this base on which angular stands the component a component is a reusable ui logic which can be loaded inside html which can be loaded inside a browser i repeat this definition a component is nothing but a reusable ui logic you know which can be loaded inside html which can be loaded inside a browser so it comprises of two things one is it comprises of a view which is which will be html right so a view or you can say an ui part and other is at the back end it will have logic so this logic will be normally javascript uh, and because we are writing in typescript so we are using typescript but finally that will also get compiled to javascript right so a component consists of a a ui plus logic in javascript right so if you see out here this is a component out here this is the class this is where we can write the logic and this is the html so a component comprises of logic plus view a component comprises of logic so this is the logic this file has a logic app component.ts and definitely this logic will then get compiled to js because ts has to get compiled to js and the ui part is in the html right so if you see out here this is what a component is this is a component and this component is connected with a ui right and this is the ui so what you can do here now is you can go in in angular and you can write some ui logic for example let us say uh, i'm i'm going to go and write uh, input type button let's assume we write a simple logic here like input type button and when you click on this button so i'll just say value click right and we'll say here click call some logic at the back end call some logic and this logic we write in the backend component.ts so this is the ui and at the backend in this class we will go and we will write this call some logic at this moment let us just go and display alert hello right and very important out here you can see that this class is connected with this html by using this template url thing and we'll discuss about this later on so you can see here this is the ui and this is the logic so that's what is a component in angular so if you go and if you run this let us see 
So if you go and if you run this, if you run this ng serve, so there our UI is running. So if I click on this, you can see the backend logic, UI plus logic. So a component is UI plus logic. Now, one of the uh, doubts, you know, which can come into your mind is that what makes this simple TypeScript class a component? So point number one to remember, the first point to remember, TypeScript does not have a concept called as component. There is nothing called as a component. The goal of TypeScript is to make it, to make JavaScript strongly typed, to give you an object oriented feeling and so on and increase productivity, right? So as such, you know, TypeScript does not have a concept called as component. This component concept comes from Angular. So you can see here this import out here, which is actually getting imported from Angular core. And this Angular core is one of the modules, you know, which is shipped with the Angular. So if you go to your package.json file, you will find that this is one of the sub modules of Angular. So this component is a concept of Angular, right? And what makes this class a component? this thing at the top of the class. This is termed as a decorator. So this at the rate component is termed as a decorator and you can see that there are three things out here, uh, four things, uh, three things out here, selector, template URL and style URL. So template URL connects with the HTML. So you can see this template URL says that this component is connected with which HTML. Style URL says this component is connected with which CSS, right? And finally, you know, this component, you know, which is nothing but the combination of HTML plus CSS plus this logic, what we are writing out here. If you want to go and if you want to load it inside an HTML, we use a selector. So this whole component, you know, which is a combination of all this HTML and plus CSS and the logic, if you want to load inside an, another HTML, then you will use this selector out here. You will use this name. You will say like this app root slash app root. So then what will happen inside that HTML, this HTML plus this logic, you know, and plus this CSS, everything will get loaded inside this HTML out here, right? So decorator component, decorator this is a decorator this at the rate component is a decorator so let us again go ahead and just revise and reiterate you know what we talked about the component now you must be feeling that you know i'm repeating the same things again and again right it is becoming mundane but i feel that this part is so important for a newcomer who comes into angular that if this part is missed out then I feel then, you know, the whole angular is missed out, right? So here it is. So we have this component thing out here, right? So this is the component, right? Or I will rather say, let us, so let me draw here. So this is the component, right? So the component has what? It has a view, right? So a component has a view. So this is the view, right? It has the logic right this is the logic this is the view this is the view at this moment right plus it has this logic plus it can have css plus it can have uh, you know some other class as well so this component can create an instance of an http object you know this component can create an instance of a logger object so basically when you when you talk about component a component comprises of view plus logic, plus CSS, plus, you know, some other logic, you know, like components, you know, or let's say classes like logger plus HTTP. So you can think about, you know, this component is like a, uh, like a mediator, you know, who uh, a mediator, I can say a connector or like a traffic police, you know, who actually gets all the things together and creates a wonderful reusable um, piece, you know, which you can go and call inside your HTML, right? So if, if I go back now, let, so let us go back to our, uh, you know, our code out here. So you can see here, this is the view. This is the component. 
And remember, if you want to call this component inside an HTML, you will call it by this name app root. So this app root is the name of the component. So if you see here in the index.html, right? So if you just see in the index.html, you can see that this app root has been called, right? So this means that he is trying to load this component inside this HTML, right? So the selector out there is nothing but the name of the component, right? So component comprises of view, CSS, logic, and this logic can be called inside the HTML by the selector, right? So this is the selector out here. This is the selector. And this one here at the rate component is, um, uh, is a decorator, right? Because of this decorator, this simple TypeScript class becomes a component or else you know, if this decorator is not out there, then this is just a simple TypeScript class, right? So that thing at the top makes this app component a component. And this component is coming from where? From the angular.core, right? And this angular.core is at this moment installed inside your node underscore module. So there it is, angular.core. And how did it get installed? It got installed because in the package.json file, because in the package.json file, you know, you have it as one of the sub modules, right? So the component that at the rate component decorator logic is there in this at angular core. In the same way, if let us say we want to do the bindings and you know, we'll be using the forms uh, and, uh, you know, if, if you want to go and do routing, we'll be using router and so on, right? So that installation was done uh, when you did npm install, right? So component decorator selector right calling of the component is like this right app root so these are the basic building blocks of angular now uh, one more important thing you know which uh, i want to talk here is the directives what is a directive a directive is nothing but it is angular code or i will say angular syntax which you write inside html and if you look at the official definition of directive, directive is nothing but it changes the behavior of an HTML element. So you can see this click out here, this click out here is an angular syntax. This click out here is an angular syntax. Please note this is not the on click. Our JavaScript event is on click. This is not the on click. This is a click with a round bracket. So this is actually an angular code. So when you see an angular code inside the HTML, it is termed as a directive and this directive what it does it actually goes and changes the behavior of an HTML, HTML element for example this button out here was a simple button but now it has a behavior of a click because you have put a click directive so putting in simple words directive is nothing but it is angular syntax which you write inside HTML now, one more important uh, vocabulary I want to uh, talk here is template, template, right? So normally you will hear this word angular template, right? Angular template is nothing but, you know, an angular UI. So this ang app.component.html is a template. So angular template is nothing but it is an HTML file which has directives, which has angular syntaxes inside it. So you must you can call this as app component.html but mostly you know inside the angular community they will call it as a directive so whenever they whenever you know you will see uh, uh, they will call it as a template so whenever you will see that you know angular developers talk about this template url they will say that this is a template right so just trying to summarize you know all the vocabularies out here a component is nothing but it comprises of logic plus view right a selector helps us to call this component. So selector is the name of the component. This at the rate component is a, um, uh, it is a decorator, you know, which actually makes this normal TypeScript class a component. And inside the HTML, you know, whenever you write any kind of angular syntax, it is nothing but a directive. And this HTML out here is nothing but it is also called as a template. So these are, you know, some of the vocabularies, you know, as we go ahead, we'll be using them. The other important concept which we need to understand in Angular is the 
module. So what do we have now? We have a component, right? So let us say you have a customer add component, right? So let us say you have a customer add component and what does a component comprises of? A component comprises of a view plus logic, right? So this view is in HTML for now and this logic is written in TypeScript, right? In the same way, probably you can have another component out here, which again has a view plus logic. Let us say that you have this component as the customer reporting component. So this helps you to display customer reports. Now what you'd like to do is that you'd like to go and put these components into a logical grouping. So you'd like to go ahead and put them into a logical grouping, logical group. So this logical group is termed as a module. So must be you can go and give a name here saying customer module. A module, an Angular module, helps you to logically group components. I repeat this, an Angular module helps you to group components. So one module can have many components. And in a project, specifically in a complicated project, you can have many modules. So like assume that this is a customer module out here, which has two, three components. And then you can have one more module out here, which is a supplier module. So you can have multiple modules in a project. So you can have a supplier module and it has supplier component one, supplier component two and so on. So in a project you can have multiple modules and every module logically groups components. So there you can see the code of a module. So this is a component, this is the UI and this is the module. So app.module. The first thing what you will notice out here is that the way we had decorators for components. So for example, when you take a simple class of TypeScript and you put a decorator of at the rate component, this becomes a component. In the same way for module also, if you take a simple class out there and if you decorate this decorator of decorator ng module, this class becomes a module. So module and components are created because of this decorator out here. And in this decorator for now, focus on uh, two things. One is the declaration and another one is the bootstrap. So this declaration is where you will go and you will write your grouping of components. So for example, now let us say in your project you have two, three components like app component and let us say if you have app component one, assume how you have app component one, at this moment we don't have it and then you have add app component two. So you will go and you will write the grouping of the components over here. So you will say app component one, app component two, and so on, right? So the grouping of the components, you will you will group it in the declarations out here, right? Now from these components, which is the startup component, which will be the startup component to run first, you will define in the bootstrap. So in declarations, you will define the grouping, the logical grouping, and in bootstrap, you will define that from these components, which component will run first, which will be the bootstrap component, right? Great, so we have component, we have a view, right? And then it is logically grouped into modules. A module logically groups components. Let us try to visualize what we have learned till now. And if you can understand this visualization, you are an Angular developer. This is the most important part of the lecture. If you're able to visualize what, what I'm showing just now, welcome, <laughs> you are an Angular developer, right? So we said that we have a component. So we said we have a component. A component comprises of a view. Let me try to draw this view a little bit big. So a component comprises of a view and a logic, right? You can have many components and the grouping of component is defined in a module. 
the view and the logic is connected. Now this logic at the end of the day is a TS file, right? A class file. This view is an HTML, right? Now this view and the logic is connected by the template URL, remember? So we, we have a template URL which connects both of them. Inside the view, you will have directives. So inside the view, you will have directives like we saw the click event. So you will have directives. You will have syntaxes of Angular. And you can have many such components. So you can have an, another module like this, which is having other logical group of components, right? So now when the application runs, right? When the application runs, which of these modules will start first? So that is defined in the in the main.ts. So that is defined in the main.ts. So in main.ts, which module should run first is defined, right? So this is the module. This is the component. This file is the com the well, the component is a, is, a, is a combination of this plus this, right? And we also have an index page here, index.html. So the first UI to run is index.html. Index.html calls the main.ts. The main.ts says, okay, this is the module. And inside the module, if you remember, we had the bootstrap. So we had the bootstrap out here. This bootstrap will say which component to run first, right? So this bootstrap will say which component to run first. And that component will be loaded inside this index.html using the selector, right? So if you remember, we had this app root selector, the name of the component. So inside this app root, that component will run, right? So this is basically a visual diagram out here. Let me go to the code so that we can we can map, you know, both of them, right? So here it is, index.html, this runs first. After that runs main.ts. So in the main.ts, we are saying that the app module should run first. You can see now there are lots of code out here, like platform, browser, dynamic, don't worry about it. We'll talk about it later on, but I'm just saying that the main.ts runs after that. The main.ts says this module is going to start the app module. The app module says which com which component is going to start in the bootstrap. And then the component goes and takes up this HTML, takes up this logic, you know, takes the whole thing. And this is the selector app root and it loads this whole thing inside the index.html, right? So remember first index.html, main.ts, the component runs, takes everything, takes the UI plus the logic and loads it inside the index.html. Index.html, main.ts, module, component, loads inside the selector. And remember that we have, uh, you know, the directives, you know, which are written inside the UI, right? So if you're able to get this visual diagram in your head, congratulations, you are an Angular developer. Now, the other important concept, you know, which we need to understand as an Angular developer is binding. Binding means uh, you want to go and bind an input element. So you can see here, this is an input element, a text box. Let us say you want to bind this element to a variable of a component, right? So let us say you have a variable out here. Let us say some value, right? And uh, when an end user goes and types something on that text box, you want that, you know, whatever is typed in this text box should come to this some value. And when somebody changes something in this value, it should go and display on the screen, right? So you want to go and do a binding. For that, we have a directive in Angular, which is ng model. So you can go and you can say here ng model m capital, right? What is the name of your variable? Our name of our variable is some value. Uh, again, like remember in case of TypeScript, you will say variable name and then the data type, right? 
So you can see a sum value colon string, sum value colon number, sum value colon boolean, right? So now we want to go and bind this text box with this sum value, right? So you can see here ng model. Now, you know, let us, now you can also go and control, you know, how do you want uh, this binding to happen? Means when you look at a binding, right? When you look at a, a what you call a, the binding flow, the binding flow can be like this. When you type on this text box, you want that it should, uh, uh, it should be sent to this sum value. When the sum value change, you want that it should be, uh, you know, sent to the UI as well, right? So that means that you want a two-way binding, right? So because you need a two-way binding, you will use two other signs out here, the square bracket and the round bracket. So what does the square bracket signify? The square bracket says that the data can come from the component to the UI. The data can come from the component to the UI. So this, whenever the sum value changes, you should also update the UI, right? And this round bracket here signifies that, you know, the data can go from the UI to the component as well. So remember, the two-way binding here, because we want a two-way binding, we want that the data should go from the UI to the component and from component to the UI. That's why I have put both of them, right? So the square bracket signifies that the data can come from the component to the UI and the round bracket signifies, you know, that events can go from the uh, from the UI to the component, right? So there it is. Now we would like to also go and display this sum value somewhere. So when when you type on this text box, it will go and it will change this sum value. And when the sum value changes, you'd like to go and display that on a UI. For that, we can use something called as expressions. So if you want to go and display the sum value here, you can use something called as an expression. The expression is denoted by this double curly bracket out here. So you start with a double curly bracket and you end with a double curly bracket. So this is called as an expression because you can go and you can, you know, write some expression like one plus one and it will evaluate, evaluate to two. This is termed as an expression. Also, many people call it as an interpolation. Interpolation means we can mix HTML with this data out here like this. So I can say bold slash bold and I can mix, you know, the angular directive, the angular expression like this. So remember, you can term it as an expression or you can term it as an interpolation because you can mix HTML with the angular uh, variables, right? So ng model is a directive which helps you to bind the input element with the component with, with the variables or the objects at the back of the component, right? Now you can see there is some error out here. Let us try to understand this error. So if you go and if you see this error, it says that uh, uh, error occurred. Okay. Now first thing, how should you read the error? How should you read the error, right? Very important it is. You can see here now we have got we have got a lot of red signs out here, right? And how do I go and read the error, right? So first thing is when you see an error, you will normally be at a bottom. So you'll be, be you will be at a bottom like this. Try to go and scroll till the top. Try to go and scroll till the top and read the first error which occurred because that's where the most important information is. So I'm going to go now to the first, to the place, you know, when the, where the error occurred first, where it showed the first red sign. So here it is. You can see here first, you can see that uh, so before this, everything was green and here we had this error. So you can see the error number out here saying angular 8002. And what is the error? I cannot bind ng model. I cannot bind ng model since it is, it isn't a known property of an input. So it is actually throwing up a error here saying that he cannot bind ng model or he does not understand ng model. And you can see it says error occurs in the template. Remember I said, Template means the HTML file, means, means the UI. So you can see this wordings out here. It's it's occurring in the template. And it is also saying that uh, at which line it is occurring. So 1, 20. So 1, 20 means 1, line number 1, right? Line number 1 and column number 20, okay? So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So this, you know, it's saying that it is the error is occurring, uh, 
in the column number 20. So the column number 20 can probably be this, right? So that means that he's not understanding ng model. Okay. That's the whole point. He's not understanding the syntax of ng model. And why he's not understanding? Because you have not loaded the appropriate Angular modules, right? Remember uh, when we saw the package.json file? So in the package.json file, we saw that Angular has a lot of, Angular is modular. It has a lot of modules like Angular animation, Angular common, uh, Angular core, right? Uh, Angular router, you know, for navigation and Angular forms for binding. So the, the binding magic is in Angular forms and it is, uh, and we need to go and load this Angular form. So let us go now to the module level. Okay. At the module level, let us go and import the forms module, right? So let us go and import the forms module. So what we'll do here, we'll say comma and we'll say forms module. You can see out here. Now, when you tab out here, automatically it imports the forms module at the top and it puts this forms module out here. So in the ng model decorator, you will go to the import section and you will import the forms module, right? And once you do that, you know, he should be able to understand the, the ng model syntax. So I'm going to go and save it and let us go down below and let us check that if our error has gone off, you can see now the error has gone off, right? So it is compiled successfully, right? So remember that, you know, when you actually go and write any directive out here, the appropriate module has to be loaded from Angular so that that directive can be recognized, right? So with all that, now let us go ahead and run our application. Let us see. Uh, so localhost 4200. So there it is. You can see the first thing is, the first thing is this expression one plus one has been evaluated to two, right? Remember our click was working, the hello, right? So that is out there. Okay. Uh, and now when I go and when I type on this, right? When I type on this, you can see the expressions getting changed. So when I type on this, the data is getting binded to the some value at the back. And also the, our expression is getting updated. This is the expression. This is the interpolation. You can say it is getting updated, right? So binding, if you want to go and bind an input element uh, to the component variables and objects, you can use the ng model directive. So this is a directive. This click is a directive. This is an expression. This is an interpolation, right? And remember, uh, you have to load the forms module or else, you know, he will not understand the syntax of ng model. And most important, whenever you get an error, whenever you get an error, you will go till the top. These are important points as a, as a fresher to understand, as a newcomer to understand in Angular. So remember, whenever you get an error like this, you will scroll to the, to the, to the last point with the, to the first error, you know, where the error occurred, right? So this was the last time, you know, when Angular compiled successfully. So just after that, and whenever you get, you know, uh, such kind of an error where it says that can't bind, can't understand, right? That means, you know, that that module has not been loaded, right? So once you load the module, once you go here and say load forms module, everything works perfectly nice, right? So now let us go ahead and write some logic. And uh, afterwards, you know, when we have finished writing this logic, we can go through the important directives of Angular or the different types of directives in Angular, right? So the logic is as follows, you know, the logic which we want to write in Angular is as follows. The end user can go and type on this text box, right? And when he clicks on this button here, it should add this value to a table down below. So the end user goes, types a value, he clicks on this button out here. And once he clicks on this button, it should go ahead and add some, add the data to a table down, right? So that means that now this text box is binded first thing, this text box is binded to this sum value string. That is the first thing, right? Now, if you want to go and uh, show it in a table, the first thing what we have to do is that we have to store this sum value in a collection, right? So we'll go here and we'll say sum value and we'll create a collection, sum values, sum values. So sum value singular saying that 
this is binded with the text box and some values it's a collection saying that it will be binded with the table right now uh, you can either go with pure javascript and you can say some values is equal to square bracket and this creates a collection or what you can do is you can use typescript you can say array array of string so you can go and say array of string is equal to new array of string right and then in this in this call some logic remember that this call some logic is uh, present in this click button out here right so in this call some logic we will go and we will say add this some value to some values remember some values is plural 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 right it represents a collection uh, so we'll say here uh, some values dot pushed and we'll say some value and you'd like to also go and clear this uh, text box as well right so what we'll do is we'll say some value is equal to empty so this will go and will clear clear the uh, clear the value as well on the text box right and now let us go ahead and create a table down below so we'll say here br we'll create a simple table so some value now we would like to go and loop this tr so the, the below tr we would like to go and loop it until we have data in the collection you know loop to the elements in the collection right so this is a sum values is a collection so we would like to go and loop right so to do a loop you know we can use the ng for syntax so we'll say here star ng for is equal to ng for is equal to let let temp of now what is our collection our collection is some values right so temp of some values so what will happen is this ng for syntax out here will go and make a loop it will take every value and it will put it into this temp variable right and uh, now we'll go here and we will say display the temp remember the displaying part is uh, the same as we have used an expression as we have used an interpolation right so that's it you know this should work so let us go back to our ui and let us see so we'll say here shiv and let us add we'll say test and let us add so you can see how simple it is by using angular by using the power of directives by using this ng4 by using this ng model by using this expressions you know by using uh, this beautiful code of TypeScript, which is class oriented, which is strongly typed. How easy it is to code using Angular, right? Now, uh, let us try to understand the different directives in Angular. So you can see here that we have written some directives. We have written ng model. We have written ng4, right? So uh, let us start, try to understand these directives. So what we'll do is in order to understand these directives, let us go to the website of let us go to the official website of angular.io right official website of angular that is angular.io so we'll do like this we'll say that um, <clears throat> let us google right i would like to use the notes directly from the official website rather than showing my notes out here so we'll say here different directives in angular and we are very we are mostly interested to read from angular.io right so here we go and you can see here angular.io uh, you can see the different types of directives given in Angular with the definition, right? Remember, Angular.io is the official website of Angular. So whatever you read from the official website is coming directly from the horse's mouth, right? So you can see there are three kinds of directives in Angular. Let us try to go, go through each one of them. So you can see that these are the three kind of directives out here, component, attribute, and structural, okay? So let us start with component out here. So component, when you say a component directives, right? If you remember, I said component is nothing but it is UI plus the logic. So it has a template actually associated with it. Template means HTML, right? So whenever you hear this word, 
Angular template that means HTML, right? So component directives are directives, you know, where you call your component, where you actually create a component, uh, where you actually create like how we had app component.ts and it had a template URL and so on. So that is a component and you call it, uh, you know, by using the selector name. So you can see here, this is a component directive. This is a component directive, right? The second kind of directive is attribute directives. Attribute directives change the behavior, change the appearance or behavior, right? For example, it can just change the color must be or it will change the behavior. For example, if you see this input type button, you have this click attribute, uh, click uh, directive out here. You can see this ng model directive, right? So what does a click directive do? A simple button now, which was first a very simple button, it now, it has an additional behavior of a click, right? For example, this text box, which was a very simple text box, but because of this directive of ng model, it is now binding to a variable, right? So this attribute directives, actually they change the behavior or the appearance, right, of an element. So both of them, both of these are attribute kind of directives, right? And the last one is structural directives. They change the DOM layout, right? So they add elements, you know, they remove elements and so on. So you can see this ng4 directive is a structural directive. So this is a structural directive. Whenever you see such kind of a star out there, it indicates that it is a structural directive, right? So component directive, it, this is nothing but your component where you have your own HTML, uh, let us not use the word HTML, the own Angular template, right? And the code behind and, you know, and you can call uh, the name, the selector name out here. That is the component directive. Attribute directives, you know, they don't remove an element. They don't hide an element. What they do is the existing element to change the behavior like ng style. That's an attribute directive. Click is an attribute directive. ng model is an attribute directive. Uh, enable, disable, right? So if you are going to enable and disable, that is again an attribute directive. They change the appearance, the look and feel or the behavior. And the last one, it actually goes and adds and removes DOM element. For example, this ng4 here adds new TR elements to the DOM, right? So remember, structural, attribute and component. I would like to highlight a very important point out here. This is also one of the favorite questions asked during Angular interviews, right? So uh, what are the types of directives? Now what happens is, you know, developers are, uh, you know, are a very different kind of people, you know, they, they work hard, they code, they deliver projects, right? But when they're asked questions like, okay, what are the different types of directives? They don't remember upfront, isn't it? Uh, so here's a small tip, you know, if this question is asked during the interview, uh, you can remember this word SAC. <clears throat> so S stands for structural, A stands for attribute, and C stands for component. Everything is fair in getting a job and war, right? Remember guys, you know, coding, doing a work, working in a company, hands-on, you know, is one thing. But cracking an interview is a different ball game, right? For example, you saw, saw you know, in the last two hours, you know, we have been coding, we have been, we have been trying to understand the concepts, right? But when it comes to interviews, right, you know, when you're asked question, you should be able to express them, you should be able to express the right technical vocabulary, you should be able to give clear cut answers, right? So what I've done is, I've floated a very wonderful course here called as the Angular interview question with answers and code demonstration course, right? So if you want to get access to this course, you can go to the comment section. In the comment section, I have pinned a comment and in that pinned comment you can find a one hour of free video this that first one hour is free out there you can go you can watch that video and if you wish to buy the full course you can buy the course from questpond.com you can buy the course from our uh, youtube uh, channel subscription you can go to udemy and many other places those things are also mentioned in the descriptions right so remember uh, coding is one part you can code you are hands-on you are a great developer you are a hero in your company but when it comes to cracking interviews, it is a little bit different, right? So try to prepare holistically. 
you know, yes, you should be hands on. Yes, you should know how to deliver a project. But the, at the same time, when somebody will ask you questions during interviews, you should be able to answer them in an elegant way. Congratulations, congratulations, congratulations. You have completed two hours of training on YouTube. I mean, like on YouTube, people watch, I don't know what kind of content, right? And you have been learning on YouTube. There is nothing satisfying more than this, right? So if you are, if you are out here, if you're watching this clip, if you're watching this face out here, if you're watching that screen out there, right? Why don't you please inform me on facebook.com slash questpond saying that I completed two hours so that as a trainer, you know, I feel that I have achieved something and I, I, you know, it's not me just alone recording for two hours, right? There is someone out there who's also listening for, for two hours, right? So if you're out there and if you're coming till here, right, please go to facebook.com slash questpond and please rate me and please say that, yes, you know, we are here. We are watching your content. We like your content so that, you know, it motivates me to create, you know, such more kind of content. Okay. Now said and done, right? Def definitely this was only the basics of it, basics of Angular. When you say that you want to do advanced angular, when you say you want to become a pro, a real pro, right? Then there are many topics out there, right? First one, routing. How to go from one screen to another screen, navigation, routing. Second, lazy loading, load on demand, dependency injection, right? Validations, HTTP calls, unit testing, view child, content child, content children, passing data between components, state management, you know, it keeps going out there. So if you want to really become a pro in Angular, here it is. You can please go to questpond.com, get the subscription out there. If you want, you can also go to YouTube out here and you can subscribe. When I say subscribe means YouTube subscription, right? You can go and you can go to the YouTube out here and uh, by my YouTube subscription, you get all the access to these advanced tutorials out there, right, of Angular. Second, if you are a person who says, no, no, I want to learn like one-to-one -one from you, Shiv. So why not, you know, come to questpond.com and we have live trainings of Angular on Saturday and Sunday. You can attend the same. And if you say, no, like I want to learn offline, you know, I, I want to see you and you are with me, right? We are in a classroom. Then please, you know, you can also come to our Mumbai office out here. We have continuous training of Angular offline. I, I love personally offline training because in offline training, what happens? You sit for like that Saturday and Sunday. 16 hours and you are done with angular right so any way you want to learn you know i'm more than happy to help you right so happy learning happy job hunting keep learning keep liking my channel keep sharing my channel thank you very much